All right, so today we're going to talk about conflict. But what is conflict? What is it about it that we have a problem with? Why, why does people avoid conflict? Why, are, why is this this horrible thing that people try to stay away from? If you ask the average person, is conflict good or bad? Most of them say bad. Some of them will say, well, it depends. But generally speaking, most people find conflict to be bad. So first, let's talk about what it is. Conflict is an express struggle between at least two interdependent parties who perceive incompatible goals, scarce rewards, and interference from the other party in achieving their goals. Morton, Morton Deutsch once said that the, they said that there must be some form of interdependence in order for there to be con for conflict to exist. Okay, so most of you probably grew up and you had a ch as you're growing up, you had a parent that would say, "Eat your vegetables," or because there's some starving kid in Africa or Ethiopia or wherever it was, the country du jour was. So when we think about this, though, did you really have a problem with that child in Africa or wherever it was? Or did you have a problem? Did it prevent you or get you to eat, eat your vegetables? Probably not. Had nothing to do with it. In fact, you probably thought, you know what? Then send it to them. I don't want them. So... There must be some form of interdependence. There has to be something that is part me, part you, part whatever. And it says it is expressed struggle. So it's something that's there. It's out there. And we're seeing a perceived incompatible goals, a scarce reward, and scarce rewards. So either what I want and what you want, my goal and your goal are different, and they're incompatible, and therefore we're at conflict, or scarce rewards is there's the last donut. And I want the last donut, but I think you want the last donut too. I perceive you as wanting it, and therefore we have those those incompatible goals or scarce rewards. All right. Now, conflict is not static. It does not stay stationary. It escalates and it de-escalates as things change or things progress. One of the first things that happens is unfulfilled needs. As things go along, as we go along with our needs and they're not fulfilled and we don't get that donut or we don't get the things that we're looking for, this will escalate the conflict or increase the conflict and make things worse. The next thing is that, that's, that can be compounded by what's called dialectic tension. It's the idea that what I want or what I think I want versus what I can do type concept. Let's, let's look at a... Um, Inter, introvert extrovert kind of situation the introvert wants to go to the party that party's there they really want to but you know what <clears throat> i want to stay inside okay so those are the ideas of dialectic tension but as the needs go unfulfilled it goes up the next thing is we have faulty attribution we assign x to y behavior so obviously you did this and therefore you mean that I, and I assign it, and it's usually pointing the finger and saying, this is that, and this is this, and when you did this, this is what you intended or what you meant, and we make that attribution even though we don't know for sure. All right, moving on, let's look at the idea of assigning fault, because let's face it, none of us are at fault for the, for the situation. It's somebody else's fault. What we see, why we have a problem, why can't we have enough apple fritters in there and there's just the one last apple fritter and what can we do about it? It's because you didn't buy enough. You didn't buy enough apple fritters and now that I'm, I'm going to go without. So we're going to assign fault because obviously when we're at fault, when we're doing this, who's at fault? Mm, you. It's never me. It's always you. All right. Moving on, we have unethical behavior. These can obviously escalate problems. So when you're talking about that, we're talking about things like deceit, lies, and gossip. Things that create more problem than they ever help. All right, so let's go into this. Let's look at the idea of lies, deceit, deception, fabrications, falsehoods, myths, all those fun, wonderful things. And let's talk about the different types of lies or deceptions. The first one is altruistic lies. Does anybody know what altruism is? Okay, an altruistic lie, excuse me, an altruistic lie is those little white lies. It's those things that are there to usually make things better for people. Has anybody seen the movie Liar Liar? If you watch it, if you haven't watched it, you ought to watch it because it's a, it's a Jim Carrey movie and it may or may not be a good movie, but it definitely shows how much lying we do in a standard day. Now, an altruistic lie is that I lie that is there to protect people's feelings or to do things like that. For example, somebody saying, Dude, why these pants make my butt look big? Well, 
given the change in direction, it used to be, oh no, honey, those don't, do. now it's like, hell yeah, they do, back that thing on up here. So altruistic lies are those things, are those lies that actually are there to help people. The next one are evasions. These are, there's a couple different kinds of evasions. The first one is equivocation. It's that, it's that saying like, oh, I met up with an old friend from high school last night. I didn't bother to tell you that that old friend from high school also was my first crush. You know, makes sense. Or you're hinting around like, instead of just coming out and saying, it's like, you know, I don't think vaping is allowed here. Or then you move into the self-serving lies. Okay, we know what these are. These are the omissions or fabrications. We're going to leave things out of this, the thing. You know, I fell asleep in the hammock in the backyard last night, or I, I was out doing this or whatever. And these are things that I'm actually making up lies that are trying to prevent it or omitting lies in order for that, that point of omission. 